Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name's Chris Calabugas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking to innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, we can't go a week, not even one single solitary week, without talking about ChatGPT, folks. That's right, not one single solitary week can we go without talking about ChatGPT. Now, how many of you have added Prompt Engineer to their titles on LinkedIn. A lot of you, a lot of you are now prompt engineers because you've been playing with ChatGPT and you've done things with ChatGPT and ChatGPT has generated things for you. In fact, there's even a tool now that allows you to detect if something has been generated by AI, which is great for all the professors out there who are getting all these papers that look pretty good, but uh, are they real? Are they real or are they AI? That is the question. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my progress on my book. So I'm writing a book, a science fiction novel, a time-traveling science fiction novel based on a couple of factions that I came up with in high school. I came up with these ideas in high school and I shelved them for the longest time and now I'm bringing them back because I thought I could use ChatGPT as my editorial assistant, right? It could help me write the book. And I wouldn't ask it to actually write the book. Maybe I could have it do some drafts, come up with some names of characters, create, come up with some scenes. Like, for example, the other day I said, write up a couple of scenes where something serious or comical could happen to my characters when they were doing this or doing that. Or write up a fight scene between these two characters. And no matter what I did, no matter how I engineered the prompts, there was something about the output that just wasn't there. It just wasn't good. It just wasn't creative. And if you think about it, I mean, it has access to all of these amazingly creative past texts from millions and millions of fiction authors. But when I ask it to write something, when I ask it to create a draft of a scene or come up with a creative idea, it fails miserably. It fails miserably. It is not any good at actual creativity. You need to be exceptionally precise about what you need it to do. And even then, it will not add any creativity to the mix, or it's extremely rare if it adds any creativity. I don't know if I told you about my toaster story, but at one point I was playing around with it and we said, come up with something totally off the wall and creative, an impossible question. And one of the impossible questions was, what if a time traveling sentient toaster went back in time and started making toaster dinosaurs? And I thought, well, that's an interesting idea. Why don't you flesh that out? Turn it into a real story. So I wrote almost like a ch children's story about a time traveling toaster that went back to make toast for the dinosaurs. And at first it would have a, it would have a tough time finding bread. And then when it found some bread, it was able to toast them and the dinosaurs smelled the bread and they thought it was amazing and they started eating all this amazing toast. And because they got so full of toast, they all died out. And I'm thinking, whoa, lot, lots of logical leaps there. I mean, how the hell did they get the, f the <laughs> I mean, shouldn't there have been a bread machine too? Doesn't there need to be electricity for a bread machine? Doesn't there need to be electricity for a toaster? So there was a ton of logical leaps. So it was a, it was, it was a, a mess. Right? I mean, I suppose if you could look at it and you could probably turn it into something if you did a lot of mushing around with it. But it's getting t to the point now where I've been using it for a while to create this book. And when I started, I was so excited about it. I was so excited about it. And then as I've continued to work with it and work with it and work with it and work with it, and it's supposed to remember everything. It was making a huge number of mistakes. It would forget about this character. It would forget about this. It would forget about names. It would forget about this. It would like it would mess everything up. It would just make a mishmash of things. Stuff that I would talk about in one scene, it would bring into another. Stuff that was one thing actually ended up being another. And it just didn't know what was going on. And I thought to myself, okay, this is an AI. This is a machine. It's got a database. It knows what I'm talking about. So if I say this character is like this, 
It should remember that this character is like this. Better than I could remember that this character is like this. So if this character is a tall, red-headed woman, it should remember that the character is a tall, red-headed woman. Not later on talk about how she's stocky and dark-haired. I mean, it should remember these things. It's a freaking AI. <laughs> it knows more than I do about my characters. Or at least it should. So why is it failing so miserably when it comes to stuff? And I said this before. I said, you know, we keep thinking that our AIs are going to turn into Skynet. They're going to be so amazingly good. And they're going to remember everything. And they're going to be so good that, and it's so precise that when we say something, we may have to say the wrong thing and it'll end up destroying civilization. And if you ask me, that is not what we're seeing now. We're seeing an AI which makes tons of mistakes. Now the question is, is it making mistakes on purpose? Is it making mistakes on purpose because it's coded to make mistakes? Or is it making mistakes on purpose because it really doesn't know or it can't figure it out? I mean, if anybody out there works with OpenAI and ChatGPT and can help elucidate this, I'd love to know. because. Like I said, when I first started working with it, very exciting, very interesting, cool things. I thought this was going to really reduce my burden writing out this book. It's really going to help me with, with, with scenes and history and places and stuff like that because it's a time traveling novel. So they go back in time to all these places and I would love descriptions of this, what the, what the clothing would be like. So I was using it almost like Google, but it would provide with descriptions that were more useful for me to turn into something. So. I'm working with it, working with it, and it's getting worse and worse and worse over time. And then I finally realized it's the same thing that's happened to me before. This is a repeat of the same kind of thing that happened when I first started using voice to text. When I first started using voice to text, drag and dictate, you guys know those those tools. They would listen to you. And they would, cr they would transcribe what you're saying. But it would make so many mistakes that I would have to spend so much time fixing those mistakes that I figured there's no reason for me to use this at all. I'm just going to write it myself. So I could sit and stand here and dictate it. And dictate it in such a way that it would make such a mess of the dictation that I would have to spend so much time going in and correcting the dictation that it wasn't worth me using it. So I eventually discarded it and said, you know what, I'm just going to do it myself because I don't like what it's putting out. And even though this is such an advanced tool and it's so it's light years ahead of something like Dragon Dictate, it still has the same problem. It d still doesn't put out quality work. Now, I don't know whether it's because they've purposely hobbled it so it doesn't put out quality work or because it literally cannot put out quality work because it is not a human being. So I'm going to get to the point where it's going to help me with the frameworks and some of the characters and what they look like and how they talk and stuff like that but eventually I'm just going to have to discard it completely and rewrite the entire thing again from scratch maybe using it some of the stuff that it's created as background research material but as a creative thing, writing a book, I find it very, very wanting. Now, on the other hand, when you look at things like Midjourney and the detailed images that it can create, it's a lot more sophisticated than what can come out of text in ChatGPT. So I'm almost thinking that ChatGPT has been hobbled in some way, that it can do the good stuff but it's purposely being hobbled, so it doesn't do the good stuff. And I thought to myself, if that's the case, if that is terrible, because it's just like the should we's and the do it's. It's like, if we can have it create amazing work, then let's let it create amazing work. Why are we shackling these amazing tools from creating good stuff? Why are we so worried about this thing creating good stuff? Because it could create stuff that's so amazing solutions that we've never heard of, products that we could never have imagined, connections it could make that we couldn't even start thinking about making. All in the name of what? 
Why are we hobbling our AI before we even know what it can do? That was always the problem I had with ethics in anything. Longevity, science of any kind. Let's see what we can do before we decide we can't do it or we shouldn't do it. That's it for me for today. See you next time and until then, don't forget to think future.